Okay, so the main point of this session is just for the people who are interested in presenting bids to tell us a bit about them, about their suggestions. But just for anyone who's not familiar with the process very quickly, um, there is a wiki page on the DevConf wiki bid process. And if you want to see the details of how things work, you can look there. But roughly speaking, just the main Thing, the main message is at the moment all people are doing is really expressing interest. We're not expecting bids to have details and budgets and um, timings of when talks will be and whatever at the moment. It's just really an interest. Um, it's and the, yeah, it's also quite possible people are allowed to make some bid suggestions still in the coming months. And then normally we have a schedule that approximately the end of the year, we try to pin down who's really serious about bids. And those people fill in a checklist, which is linked from this wiki page, uh, which gives more specific details. And then sometime at the start of the year, we have a, a for more formal process to officially decide where the bid will be. Um, typically by that stage, most years by that stage, there's two or three locations that are still interested, um, but obviously it's, it's good to have as many possibilities as possible. Um, so, yeah, um, how, is it f four separate bids we have? Or? No, it's three bids. Okay, there three bids. So yeah. does someone have a three-sided coin? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we've, so that's just to say we, there's another possible bid from Portland, which isn't represented here, but um, hopefully they can post something to maybe the mailing list and put it on the wiki later on. So, someone make a random number. Okay, four. <laughs> so who's first? I, I don't know, I, I thought you had some modular it made deeper. <laughs> well, we can't cross the room. Put your hands up again. Okay, uh, we cannot be completely fair, uh, <laughs> so uh, please, uh, David, come up first. Okay. Un, deux, un, deux, un, deux, oh, oh, can you hear me? Yes? Okay. Uh, just going to try to, sorry. Match stuff, I invite you to see the screen. Okay. Here we are. Again. One, two. Yes? Okay. So, um, maybe you were there last year, and uh, Olga, thanks to him, uh, had a rough idea about uh, making a DebConf in Martinique. So, where is Martinique? You know the green-blue stuff, that's the ocean, with um, um, Caceres on one side, New York on the other, uh, Banyulaka over there, Managa, and a tiny island here, somewhere, oh, I don't know, here, yeah, on the sea. So, oh, let's uh, have a look on this uh, Caribbean Sea. The, um, the American guys are over there. Um, we are here, and 2,000 kilometers away is the Martinique. Yes, it's an island, so um, there are lots of beach around there. <laughs> lots. And in the middle, for those who missed it on the day trip, there's a volcano. <laughs> those of us who want to come by um, boat will arrive here, and the others by plane here. The funny thing about uh, Martinique is it's, uh, it's part of France, so it's Europe. So if you <laughs> So those of us who come from United Kingdom, just show your ID card and go and pass. <laughs> uh, they accept password too, passport too, never mind. 
And uh, Switzerland can show only an ID to people from Switzerland. And um, there is almost an issue anyway because uh, it is not part of the Schengen area. So sorry, we misled you last year. Many of us from many countries, including Nicaragua, uh, just need a passport to come here. And uh, a few others will need a visa. Um, just being honest, uh, knowing the customs, uh, Lidwan customs uh, in Martinique, they um, sometimes they forgot to ask you your ID card. You know, maybe it will pass. Do we have developers in the Vatican? In Vatican? Ah, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, no. Two years ago, there wasn't any develop Debian developer in Martinique. Now there is, and it's a fourth country now. Um, so now we have a local team. They are smart, they are tireless, and they are friendly. So now we are not alone, but there is still room for you. Who want to join? Olga? Okay, thank you. Don't hesitate to join us. So um, we work a bit this year, and we also find some accommodation. You will need to bring your hamacas, and we'll provide the trees. We also have a look for the venue. It can be quite nice. Um, we have to make some room about it. So you have to taste the rum, bring it to the cheese and wine, sorry. And um, it might also be our sponsors. Yeah, we can, we can work with them. Um, I have something else to say, uh, don't know why. Ah, yeah, of course, there will be no shows. Okay, so up to see you soon. No, I didn't say the word about the uh, network next time. Okay, so we will present the, the, the three bits, and afterwards we, we will have the questions for everybody together. So now Luis uh, will talk to us about the Venezuelan bit. Well, hello everybody. Um, I come to present the coastal city of Puerto La Cruz from Venezuela. Um, it, it has, as you see, uh, uh, beaches. Uh, it's also located close to Martinique, so if you are from Europe, you can go to Martinique and then take a boat to Puerto La Cruz. Uh, Puerto La Cruz is located there in Venezuela. Uh, as I said, it's a coastal city uh, known for its attractions to tourists. Uh, you would probably have heard of Venezuela because of the Angel Falls, it's the highest uh, waterfall of the world, 
uh, its oil industry. You might have seen some of, some of our women in Miss Universe. Uh, you might also have heard of uh, Simon Bolivar or Orchestra. That's Dudamel's, the guy with the big hair. Well, you man. Canaima Distribution and the rum at the cheese and wine party. <laughs> uh, as I said, it's a coastal city with amazingly beautiful beaches and islands that are, are near to the beaches. Uh, there's a national park that's called Mochima Park. Uh, it's a tourist city. There's hotels everywhere in, on the city. It's also a student city. Uh, there are four major universities in, in, the, in the city that we could use. Getting there is not that uh, difficult. You can fly to Caracas uh, and then take a bus or a local flight. Uh, you can also take, uh, uh, arrive by, by boat, but I don't know if it is so standard. Uh, it's four hours in bus from Caracas to Puerto La Cruz and 45 minutes uh, by plane. We have located mm, two options for the venue. Um, there are two big hotels, one's called Mare Mares and the other is Puerto La Cruz. There's also an alternative location for the Deb Camp and the Debian Day on one of the universities, or we can do it all in the, the hotel. Uh, the thing is, we can be all in the same hotel uh, that has uh, large uh, auditoriums like this uh, that we can use for the talk rooms or uh, the hack lab and the hack, hack lab. Uh, this is Hotel Mare Mares, the one there. Let me see if I can, no. Here, this is Hotel Mare Mares. We have a golf camp uh, here. Um, tennis camps, tennis fields, uh, a judge, judge, I don't know how to pronounce, pronounce it, judge club. And that's an artificial island that you can uh, explore. The local team. Uh, we currently have 34 people that has uh, confirmed its uh, commitment to the proposal. Uh, this, this photo you see here is Canaima community at a, an event that we call Kayapa. That's like a DEPCONF but without the day trip uh, and with, uh, with lo local community. Uh, there we have uh, those people. Uh, they are very uh, nice. Uh, so, why Venezuela? Uh, apart from that, I, I think I, I messed up the presentation. Yeah, no. Oh. Yes, I messed up the presentation. Yeah, that was first. Why Venezuela? We have a very uh, active free software community. We have Debian, uh, Ubuntu, Canaima, Fedora, uh, people uh, working in various uh, free software events. We have very successful free software projects, as you see, Canaima, Canaima Educativo. That's the laptops that we ship on the schools. Uh, also, the government is mig migrating everything from private operating systems to Debian-based operating systems like Anaima, and is using De Debian on its servers. We definitely know how to do a DebConf because, as I told you, uh, Kayapas, we, we've done six Kayapas so far, and it's essentially the same thing. Uh, we have organized people, more than 20 logs uh, throughout the country. And 
Let me see here the other. We have no immigration problems apart from some countries that need a uh, visa. Uh, all kind of foods uh, are available uh, for vegan or vegetarian. There are no limitations on imports, uh, technical stuff, money. Uh, although we have an, a difficult with money that I will tell you later. Uh, we have sponsors that usually uh, help Kayapas and free software events in Venezuela and will be totally uh, happy to sponsor DebConf. Uh, and we have some difficulties. Difficulties. I uh, would like to explain. We have current, uh, currency exchange, exchange control, and uh, it's not that it's impossible to get money into Venezuela. It's just too bureaucratic, so it has to be done uh, with some time uh, of advance. And the internet, internet connection in the place, uh, uh, it's difficult to get, but uh, it's, not, it's not a problem if we do it too, uh, with many anticipation. And that's it. Uh, thanks. <laughs> you have any questions? Or question us are later? All right. Sí, la última vez que traté de poner esto casi me come el pelo. Hello, hello. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna run out of battery soon. ¿Puedes ayudar con la batería? Eh, Edgar. A ver. Víctor, ¿me ayudas con la batería? Okay, so in uh, 2010, uh, 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 Anarkat uh, made a talk like this for uh, uh, in New York, and it was for making a bid for 2012. And as you can see, we didn't push the bid, but uh, we learned quite a bit on the process, and uh, I been convinced a little bit to try to refloat the bid. The, the nice thing is that we went further, quite uh, down the rabbit hole for that. So I, uh, we are going to try to do a little like good cap, bad cap here with uh, uh, Edgar and um, there are uh, now for the stuff we had for the previous bid. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay, so Montreal is in Quebec, in Canada. It's the uh, largest French-speaking city outside of France. It builds itself like the Silicon Valley of the French world, according to themselves. I'm sure other people will take issue on that. And uh, right now, we have actually quite a bit of uh, Debian developers that live there, and... It's not France, but it would like to be. <laughs> and uh, th there are plenty of very, very good reasons to, to make it there. I... Yes. Mm -hmm. 
There are plenty of good reasons to, to do it there. Uh, I want to mention about uh, the issues that uh, I feel we need to address, and I would like to ask for help from other people if you know or, or want to help us addressing. One of the things I find is uh, uh, Montreal is a little bit of an Ubuntu town. Yes, they get like a full bar full of people for each Ubuntu release party. And uh, so we are lacking a little bit of a volunteer base. There are Debian developers uh, in the city, but, uh, and the other thing is that we are right now, uh, uh, I'll try to go back to Montreal and grab Anarchat back into this, but so far it's uh, the ones we are pushing this are uh, Tiago and I. Yes, and you need to have a very strong French component to get money from the Quebec government. And uh, as the other point here, this is not going to be cheap. I mean, Montreal is a cheap city for the area, but it still will be comparable with doing uh, a DevConf in a European city. And last but not least, getting visas to Canada is uh, a problem, uh, particularly because due to US pressure in a sense, uh, they have very, very strict visa requirements compared to what it really needs to be. But uh, the winter is terrible in Canada. Yes, so in the summer, the whole city is in a party. Everybody's outside drinking beer. And uh, you will really, really enjoy it, and Edgar can say more about that. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's true. The, the city really, really light, lights up in the summer. Uh, we have fuckloads and fuckloads of sunlight uh, from about uh, 5 a.m. to 9.30 at night or so, 5.30, 9.30. Um, it has very, very nice uh, public transportation. And it's one of the few cities in America that, that has a, quite an interesting blend of a modern American uh, city in the sort of uh, three to five million people range, which I find is ideal for cities. It, it, it means you have everything, absolutely everything, uh, but it's not too crowded. Um, and it has a, a very nice old port uh, with, with some colonial architecture. It's uh, known as one of the best uh, party cities in the, in, in, the, in, in the northern half of the continent. So um, almost any day at night you can find very, very decent partying in the, in, in the plateau. It has very nice internet connections. It should not be hard to get a decent internet connection. I myself have a 30 megabit downstream connection for an apartment that is not too expensive. Um, what else? There is a very long uh, history of volunteering and uh, uh, anarchism in Montreal. Uh, in that sense, uh, it, we should be able to, to drive these people into DEFCONF. Uh, recently, I think I have heard more uh, also people going against technology, which will make a little more difficult, but uh, everything is uh, it's possible. But uh, we need more French connection to these people. And uh, being said that, if uh, the Martinique bid goes through, I'll vote for it. <laughs> but uh, OK, so you, you can go back to, to these uh, notes that are on the wiki if you have more questions. And I also had a, a blog post from a, a meeting uh, we had with Anarchat. The, this bid fell through because Anarchat went to Sweden and I went to Argentina. So uh, one of the good things is that I don't think neither Tiago nor I are planning to, to, to leave uh, Quebec in the next uh, six months. So from that perspective, we'll have much more uh, people working on the bid. But uh, I, I think there, there, are very, there are serious chances we can get money from the Quebec government to make it happen, particularly given the importance of French language within Debian. And uh, we can even have... A, a simultaneous translation of English to French for the DevConf, which uh, will be a nice uh, thing to have for everybody but the poor people doing the translation. And uh, um, I, I think, I mean, Montreal has a very uh, vibrant uh, developer community. I have uh, met uh, a lot of software development uh, developers. Uh, out of the blue, just uh, out uh, partying or couch surfing meetings or whatnot. It's a, it's a very much a university town. It has, like it's listed there, uh, at the very least, McGill, Concordia, UCAM, Université de Montréal. Uh, I, 
I'm thinking if we uh, pit them against each other, uh, they all have extensive uh, dormitory uh, systems, which should be half empty in the summer. Uh, if we manage to 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 find some uh, some money for uh, from the the the, Mont the uh, Quebec government, uh, maybe for instance, uh, suggesting that we'll uh, push uh, strongly some uh, French content during the event, and if we manage to get a university to to give us some uh, some dor some some dorms uh, for for hosting people. Uh, that would go a long way towards uh, off offsetting costs, and I have myself been to uh, to a few uh, local uh, free software events from uh, various communities, and 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 we well we are participants uh, of the Full Lab, which has a, a, a quite a, a strong little uh, local node of. Um, uh, of hacker activists, uh, I, there's um, there's something called anarchist tech support. Uh, <laughs> these guys should be interested. Interested, for instance, they they do activism uh, for uh, training people to 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 use uh, cryptology with email and 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 this and that. And the Debian community already has a culture of doing that. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, f all three, pr for presenting the bits. One thing I want to remark is that we will not vote on the um, DEPCON 14 um, location, but rather decide based on our checklist, and voting might be maybe the last resort, but usually we decide which venue is suited best and not vote just by majority. Um, well, I wanted to say uh, one good thing about the three bits is that they have all uh, presented a bit in the past with uh, different degrees of uh, preparation, different de degrees of success, even different degrees of uh, seriousness. But uh, I'm very happy that they're all reincurring, so it seems they don't learn. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, well, you, you saw presentations. I don't know if, uh, if there are some questions from the audience to either to all of them or to specific teams. So in, in the case of uh, Venezuela, I, I don't remember with who, I mean, I took Louder. It. Okay, sorry. In the case of Venezuela, I don't remember, uh, I, I was sharing some feelings about uh, venues and bits in, in, in Latin America, and we have the feeling that South America people always tries to show the hotels, luxury, or that kind of things. And in, in Edinburgh, we, we have been living in a hostel, in a, and we need, to we need to walk a few hundred meters to go to the university in order to, to go to, to, to DevConf. I mean, have you considered not to use a hotel as a venue and a hosting place, and maybe the university and some place close to the university, never mind if it's not so, I mean, it's cheap. I mean, it's good if it's cheap in both sense. I mean, expensive and low quality in some cases. Yeah, of, <clears throat> of course. Uh, actually, we manage three options. Uh, it's uh, two of them are hotels, but we thought that if we if we had the the I don't know the staying place and the venue uh, the venue right. Uh, in the same place, it, it would, would be much easier. But the third option, huh? Might be. Uh, but the third option uh, is using one of the uh, those universities. It is well uh, equipped uh, for the venue, and it's totally doable. So uh, the people you, you show for, for your team, how many of them are in that particular uh, puerto? That particular city? Puerto. Yeah. City. Yeah. Uh, nine. 
nine of them are in the city. Uh, they have a log in there, and they actively participate in Kanaima community. Uh, we, we asked uh, in the Kanaima list for the organization, and all those people said, yes, I want to, to be in the organization. Question to the three sides: uh, Do you have any ideas? Do you have any ideas about dates? Of the what? Uh, this is for the three teams, right? Uh, no, this, this is for the three teams, or for, for the three teams. Okay. Any ideas about when the dates? Oh, we usually have uh, free software events in Venezuela uh, around July or August. So that would be a nice date, but we haven't uh, thought of it like this day and this day. No. For Martinique, it will be any time between July and August. In our case, we'll try to do it uh, far from the jazz festival, who just finished, because it, the city becomes very, very expensive to travel to. Uh, but. Yeah, maybe we can time it so it's like a week ago and you can attend the jazz festival if you you want. Yeah, um, I just wanted to support the point what that was raised over there, that we should try to not have uh, increasing standards of DEPCON accommodation. Um, we had very good standards the last two years. We will have crappier standards next year, so Probably that's the right way to go. And the main reason for this, um, if we don't spend too much money on accommodation, we will have more money for other things, especially travel sponsorship. And I think it's more important to get as many people as possible here than to have um, good accommodation for some. So I will add a bit to well, Luciano and Gauden's uh, points. Well, uh, in Montreal, uh, you are looking at uh, student dormitories as a first option, so that's uh, addressed. But uh, for Martinique and for Venezuela, uh, besides what you have thought of, well, uh, palm trees with uh, hammocks are quite cheap. Uh, but, uh, uh, well, uh, speaking frankly, for, uh, for both, I think you're looking at uh, tourism hotels. Are there smaller hotels or hostels or something like that available in the area? Uh, well, yeah, the, they are. But um, we thought of these hotels be because they, uh, they are from a line of hotels that's called Venetur ho Hotels. As many of our free software uh, mm, members uh, actually have a strong relationship with the government, we might or we probably have a very uh, large discount on that venue. That's why we thought of those first. And uh, for Martinique, there are lots of uh, hostel, uh, hotel, real one, uh, that are quite expensive because they are, uh, it's a touristic area. But they are not full at this time of the year, July, August, because uh, the actual tourist season is February. July, August, as you can see, is a rainy season. Oh, okay, five minutes, between five minutes and one hour a day of rain, that's it, that's the rainy season. But more seriously, we are also looking, we, we hope that uh, the university can host us with uh, students' rooms, and that will be a really nice place because the university got one third of the of the island network, so the university could be a real good spot. Uh, one general or two general comments. Um, I think it's better to have it in the, the the conference in the university than inside a hotel. Not not for sleeping, but the real conference, because then there's more exchange with local people, else we are just isolated in the hotel. And the other thing which I especially saw in the Montreal bit, the lo you're looking for governmental support. And while governmental support is good, I think if possible, it's way better to plan the conference without governmental support. Because the way governments work and the way we work is not so easy to get together. There are exceptions, of course. Uh, 
Um, I, I was going to make a point about accommodation, but I don't need to make too many more points about accommodation because enough have been made. I'll just be very quick. Um, we definitely should not uh, splurge on luxury hotels if, if we can avoid it, but at the same time, we don't want to have you know so cramped accommodation on the other end that um, maybe people don't have enough room to sleep comfortably or or couples can't get sufficient private rooms or uh, or th similar concerns. So somewhere in the middle is good, but being very price conscious. Um, I was just wondering if there's been any thought by any of the teams for childcare. Uh, we have increasing numbers of Debian developers with children, and I'm wondering if there's any thought about childcare. I don't have any children, but it would be nice to be able to support Debian developers who want to come with family. Um, I guess uh, what is uh, I, I take the cue here from uh, from Cytrans festivals. The, the larger ones usually try to uh, to create some sort of infrastructure for kids, and you know if we have a a, a decent venue we can set up uh, a, a room for kids and have people who, who have kids or who are interested in, uh, in sort of um, uh, interacting with kids uh, volunteer to, to take care of them, lead them in some activities. Uh, I myself, uh, I'm, I have this project uh, for creating educational content for kids and I think it would be kick ass, kick ass, let me stress that, to uh, have uh, volunteers who are good with computers uh, take it as a, as a, um, as, a, as an opportunity to teach the kids uh, skills for uh, computer content creation, text, images, code, whatever. I think that would be very very nice. Like have it be like a like a summer camp, get together with a bunch of kids, experiment in a very self-directed. You play with the equipment. We just sort of kind of help out um, uh, yeah, thing. You, you have a kid. I mean, how much daycare cost you in Quebec? Oh no no no! I would never uh, try to pay for 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 daycare. I think uh, if as a community we have enough kids and this is uh, an interesting proposal, I think it should be self-sustaining. I might copy your idea. <laughs> no, we 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 also have an interesting uh, educational um, free software. Uh, project going on and we might uh, do something with the kids also. Um, just a, a well, quick question for all of the bids. Um, in terms of travel costs, and especially if we're going to be looking at travel sponsorship as well, um, can you give us a rough idea of expected, say, flight costs from Europe, from North America, South America, Japan, that kind of thing. If you, if you have them, I'm just, I'm just curious. Flight costs. Oh, well, I can't give you exact amount, amounts. How, about, how much does it cost you to go to Europe? To Europe, to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I really, I, I don't know. I, we, we will put it on the, on the wiki, but we haven't researched that yet. But it, it's not that much. It's not to the high. OK, uh, for Martinique, uh, going from Paris is around seven, 800 euros to flight. There are four flights a day with three different companies. Um, so that's not that bad. From America, there is one flight a day um, to go through Puerto Rico. Uh, Montreal has very cheap flights from Paris to Montreal. In low season, you can get even for $500, $600. But uh, if you are coming from the Americas, in general, you have to make a stop in Miami. And well, then you get, need a US visa. And just to get here, it, it cost me like $700. So thanks. Uh, yeah, uh, for North America, Mexico, Europe, uh, if done with, en if done during the low season or during high season with enough forethought, 
I'm talking, started looking for tickets about three to one month before at least. Uh, you can probably get something in the 500, 600 price range. Uh, for Asia and South America, obviously, it's more expensive, and if it's going to be cheap at all, it usually goes through the U.S. Uh, now, it's interesting about the U.S. If you do have a U.S. visa, one thing to consider is to uh, arrive a couple of days er earlier at New York. New York is one of the cheapest hubs uh, in North America, and it's about a seven-hour bus ride from Montreal. I have a question. I don't know how hard it is to get uh, if you are from Latin America. Uh, okay. I have a question. I don't know how hard it is to get a visa to enter Canada if you are from a Latin American country. And I don't know if you will handle kind of invitation letters or somehow. Uh, most Latin American countries that, that I know of don't need a tourist visa. In fact, uh, shamefully for me, Mexico is, uh, needs a tourist visa because there were too many people asking for refugee status. But generally speaking, I don't think they ask for tourist visas that much. My experience is quite the opposite. Actually, I know very few Latin American countries that don't need a visa. Argentinians also need a visa, and it costs $130 just to apply. So it's, it's a, the, the, I, I put it on the list, the first line was visas. I, I, I acknowledge that that's something to consider about a, a Montreal bid. Uh, we will need to assemble a team to write the letters, and uh, I, I'm following the example of the New York bid where we, uh, they managed to get a, a lawyer on staff. Uh, I would hope uh, we can get the same thing for, for uh, Montreal, but that's something we need to work on, yes. So I stand corrected. I guess we just need to check. Okay, so we were told the time's up. Uh, uh, keep tuned. Uh, we will continue discussing. They will keep working. And uh, we expect to make a decision between no, no. January and March? No, early. April? I, th I think earlier, if I remember correctly, the things. Would be better to have it earlier, but uh, eh, who knows? Early yeah. next year or something like that. We'll announce it. Probably in advance. Thank you. Thank you very much.